We built ourselves a cucumber kingdom. Yee-haw! I'm Tommy. I'm John. And we're back for week five of our weekly gardening series videos. We missed last week because of finals, but uh, we're out here now. No more school, so now our school is the nature of uh, our lawn. And, and <laughs> we've been dreaming about compost and all sorts of things. <laughs> but anyway, in this video, we're going to do a little, uh, we're going to show you how we have constructed a cucumber trellis. A cucumber palace you might call it um, entirely out of reused materials and I think me and my dad have talked about it a little bit you know there's many ways to construct a cucumber palace but it's always better to try and do it you know with materials you can kind of just find laying around and get really inventive with it and uh, kind of closed loop farming a little creativity and and uh, it's a lot of fun to engage a project like this yep so check it out and uh, also wanted to say that um, it, once we hit 50 subscribers, we have been practicing on our ukulele. I play the uke, my dad's a, a guitarist, <laughs> and uh, we've been preparing a little concert for you guys once we get to 50 subs. So hit the subscribe button, like our video if you, if you like it. <laughs> Take care, y'all. Hey, Tommy and John back here. And um, so what we have here is a lilac stick. Uh, it's a, a dead one. Uh, and uh, sometimes when you do maintenance on lilac bushes, the uh, dead sticks will be in towards the center. The live sticks uh, and all the blooms, of course, out towards the outside. And one of the maintenance issues with uh, more mature lilac bushes is actually pulling these out they sometimes just break out these sticks yeah it's one of my favorite jobs actually you can kind of just snap them right out of the ground and uh, then you get this beautiful looking six to eight foot long stick and it's incredibly they're, hard they're, wood yeah they're now, you know they're tough <laughs> my dad's tough. pretty strong and he yeah can't. and i could give it more but, but um, <laughs> these, these tend to you know uh sticks come in such a, a wide variety and when you're building a trellis and stuff it's that's one of the things if you're going to build with sticks is you want to try to find some kind of sticks that are going to uh work with you and not just break apart you know when you when you start using them yep. so one of the first things we're going to do uh you can see i already lopped off uh one side branch there but basically take some loppers you could use a saw too if you wanted to and just be careful and kind of kind of take these side branches off we can even break off some of these little ones. Well, that one doesn't want to go. You could use a pair of clippers too and just kind of kind of trim it up a little bit. So now the best thing here, we're going to we're going to start prepping this uh, prepping this stick. Now we've got our 6 to about 6 foot long here maybe. Not quite that tall. About 5 so, feet tall. So one end uh, if this is going to be a post type stick instead of a attached cross stick, one end you're going to want to be driving in, which means you're 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 likely going to want to use a hammer to to uh, drive it into the ground 
which means um, you want to get a good uh, horizontal cut across and be able to imagine hitting it with a hammer and it not shattering all over the place. Yep. And the purpose of that will be on the bottom end then we'll be able to sharpen this using our handy pocket knife here and then we'll be able to drive the post into the ground pretty deep and it'll be nice and sturdy for our cucumbers. So uh, yeah, we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. Imagine, you know, trying to drive that in with a hammer, not too fun. So we're gonna cut it off nice and clean here. Maybe, back, you know, try not to lose too much of our stick here. Don't lose any fingers either. Yeah, definitely uh, watch your digits there. <laughs> nice, uh, nice and easy. All right, now so you you've, got, you've got, you've uh, got, you know, it's not perfect, but if you hold it like this, we can see, we can envision that we could smack that with a hammer and get have some hope of getting that nice into the ground. And we'll show you that in a minute. And then first we'll show you how to sharpen the other side of that. So my dad is the... Uh... I'm the old man whittling on the pole. <laughs> so one, one way to sharpen then is just kind of go around. You take in your knife and and what we're doing is just cutting off a little bit of, or shaving off a little bit at a time and you don't have to get down to a pencil point or something but you want to kind of get that especially towards the bottom get that kind of sharpened a bit yeah. so and the closer I'm you go towards going the end round and round here now this lilac wood is you know definitely you can tell it's got some substance to it and you keep going around so maybe Tommy will pause the camera for a minute yep and we'll come back with when we've got this all ready all ready to go on the ground okay so now we're out here at our cucumber patch and you can see the result of a couple minutes of sharpening has made a nice point there so you can yep. see there's a cucumber plant and we're gonna put in that post. My dad's gonna demonstrate how to drive it in with the hammer. All right, we're lining up a little bit first with some other posts we put in here. And yep. Just kind of, so it, it is actually kind of helpful to take your hammer and use the, you don't usually drive, your, use your hammer this way, but this, this is a nice way when you're driving a stake in. Just kind of softly tap it in. We've got our beautiful Iowa soil here. Yeah, you can see that sunk about uh, sunk about a foot at this point. We'll go a little bit more here. Yeah, you can probably get it in another. How are we doing? Tommy needs to go down a little bit. See, he's driving it in there. So these other three posts here, we've got set up alongside the outside, and this is going to be the base of our cucumber trellis. A little more. We've got four very solid posts in there. If I try to come over and pull this one, it's got no give to it at all. It's not going anywhere. And that's because of my dad's expert craftsmanship on building these posts. Well, so, I do what I can, but. <laughs> you can tell he drove this one in. It was, uh, it was no. like all the way up here to start with. And then down You all there, probably no. noticed how curvy this, this one was. Not a great thing when you're using it for a post. So do try to pick them as straight as you can, but notice we were able to get it to work. So, so uh, that's in there. The best thing about using, you know, sticks and stuff uh, for cucumber trellis is that, uh, you know, you're using the material that the plants would naturally grow on to do it. And you know, you can go out to the to the store and buy, you know, metal stakes or plastic stakes to put your plants up in, but they like to grow best on sticks. Um, and, and twine and other organic material and so we'll show you a little bit how to construct this cucumber trellis all the way out and we're gonna make a very nice palace for our cucumber plants so we'll be right back all right so we're back over here at our construction bench for our next part of our uh, trellis construction project come around on this side Tom? sure okay you can see here this branch is actually a dead branch that just fell from our old pine tree and it's gonna be perfect for our purposes of making shorter pegs. Um, these pegs are just designed to be uh, short stakes that go into the ground and are able to have tine, twine tied through the top of them to go up to the uh, upper 
part of the trellis. So they'll have holes in the top of them as well. Um, but my dad here now, we're going about oh, 18 inches or so. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we just, first of all, just cut it straight off, 18 inches, nice stick. Yes, yeah, Tommy said this one happens to be pine. Okay, so to sort of finish our little steak or stav, um, what we're gonna do, a couple things. Um, of course, we had that one end cut off, so we'll be able to hammer that in. The other end, we're gonna sharpen up again, just like before with the longer steak. And we will drill a hole here in momentarily uh, to help us tie the string. But basically, again, you wanna kinda of go around and sharpen up. And so Tommy will pause the video Yep. in just a moment and we'll come back with this thing sharpened up so we've made our little stove here and you can see it didn't get quite as sharp the pine was a little tough but that's definitely gonna be enough to drive it in there and now we're gonna drill a little hole in the top of this thing it would help if I had it going in the right direction so here we go All right Now, one thing we can do is with a hole like that, of course, it would be easier to pass our string through there for secure tying. So uh, our, we're gonna be using string from here, as you'll see in the uh, little bit later in the video, uh, going from here to a top brace. Yep, so you can see we got our hole there. And now we're gonna go finish making four other little stakes. Four more like this. And we'll be back to put together our final trellis. Welcome back folks. Tommy's here. John's here. And you, as you can see, we've got a stav here and actually four more there that we were working on. We've got them sharpened up pretty good. For a little ease, we put a loop of string through already. And so through those holes that we drilled in the top there. Yeah, that might uh, make it easier as we uh, tie some string up to the main frame. And what we're going to do... Um, so we already have five cucumber plants in here. Uh, we're going to plant this a little tight with uh, some more cucumber plants. Four uh, more. Probably four more. And so we'll go ahead and be driving this in. Yep. So now we're just going to put uh, one of those stops next to in between our four outside posts and one in the center there. And yeah, so you can see how that was pretty easy to drive in with the hammer. You want to get it nice and secure because when you're working with twine, as we will be here, you got to make sure you can get it real tight. Uh, so now we got our five stakes in the ground there. You can see all with their twine ready to go. And now we're going to uh, put the top pieces on there. We've got five pieces of lilac there. And we're going to start attaching an upper frame here to the top of our trellis. One thing you can do um, uh, carefully is, is uh, if, if you want to make for easier attachment uh, is uh, sort of make a flattened part of your end there. Um, a saw cut at one point and a cut that way will will handle it. But uh, you can make a again a flattened version that kind of gives you a little easier attachment. It's not totally necessary to do that, but Sometimes just for fun almost and then uh, what I'm gonna do, you know, even though these lilac sticks are really tough uh, what I'm gonna do is use some pilot holes so that we have less risk of splintering the wood and kind of you know uh, messing up what we're doing so we're gonna use some some pilot holes right here and just kind of drill down and another one over here and to get a decent attachment uh, I'm going to use a lighter hammer so that I'm not in a situation where I'm going to uh, hit something a little too hard and we'll just kind of tap that in I'm using a six penny nail nice and smaller nail if you used a 16 penny nail you might shatter something here but just a nice little tacking right there and I think we have a 
box of nails over here so we get another little six penny nail here and get that one on there right through there and again you see this sort of a little bit easier to attach by having flattened off one of the ends like that and that's really it for attaching one of the rails so then uh, we're gonna we'll go off the video and do the other four yeah well we're actually gonna do just one more and then show you an attachment in the other direction with a different method yeah. so we'll do one more attachment and we'll be back in just a moment so now we're gonna attach these three other pieces here across the top here like this to make a nice uh, thing for our twine to reach up to and you can see my dad is using some thin metal wire there real easy cheap material just to wrap around twice three times and then he's gonna take it over the top pull really tight wrap around three more times on the other side and you can see that's not going anywhere and you'll do the same thing over here and at all six of the joints to get it real tight okay so as you can see we've attached from the stops on our rings of string some string up to the structure for cucumbers to grow up we'll be planting yep. some seeds so we'll put stars. yeah we'll put one seed right next to each of these posts here and then those seeds will climb directly up here and for the other five cucumbers well, the other four around the edges, they'll climb up the sticks there. And then you can see my dad here is attaching the last vertical piece of twine from this one. So each of these is attached to that loop at the bottom using a square knot. And then up at the top, a double wrap. And then a square knot. Pull it through we'll kind, it. Of, kind of tight. Yeah. And we'll see what we can do here. Yeah, we are no uh, knot tying experts. I know that some people would... Uh, <laughs> but yeah. that should hold <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty tight in there and so yeah feel free to experiment with any kind of knot now one thing we're going to do to kind of spice up our geometric design a little bit you can see it's already looking pretty good here and we'll have nine cucumber plants each able to grow vertically and then they'll spill out over the top dad do you want to show like kind of how we'll do that yes of course They'll do so what what we hope is you know um that we'll be able to have this literally covered with cucumber vines growing up up the supports across but uh, cucumbers grow in many directions so one thing we thought of was maybe tie right here in the center use a make a little design here uh, we'll put a square knot there kind of roll the string out I just like to give myself a little extra room here. You know, it's uh, always easier to give yourself a little extra than to come up short. Of course, I'll say that. Maybe I'll come up short, but no, I think we're going to be okay here. <laughs> so we go up to the corner like that, and we can put a piece in like that. Maybe wrap around. We'll get this nice and tight. And the whole time, all these twine knots are actually going to be uh, helping strengthen the support of the entire structure. That is very true. And yeah, so you can see we're going to go to every corner from the center stop there. And cucumbers love to climb. So wherever you put something for them to climb on, they will grow. And we'll keep you updated throughout the season with how this works. But we'll be right back to show you the finished product. So we're just finishing up planting our uh, cucumber seeds, the ones around the outside, in addition to our transplants here. And you can see, I'm gonna drop this seed in here, but we've now completed our little geometrical project in here. Dad, if you wanna come get closer to it too, you can be a cool angle maybe. You can see we've got one string going to each of the corners upwards and kind of an upside down pyramid look. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of a cucumber palace. So at the end of our videos every week, we'll do a quick garden walkthrough to kind of take you on the adventure uh, that we go through as our stuff starts to grow up and share some of that joy we feel. Um, right now, things are just starting to bloom. It's, it's May 
18th. May 18th, yeah, the heat's starting to kick in. We got 80s coming this week and things are really gonna start kicking. Um, so we'll show you what we got right now. It's nice for us to be able to keep some documentary evidence and also share with you our journey here. So we put in some new stuff this week. This is a new bed right alongside our driveway here. And you can see these are some, uh, these are called Celosia flowers. They're annual and we've got them intercropped here with some butterfly milkweed. So those are just starting to grow right now. We transplanted those after planting them inside in early February. Here's our little herb garden going over here. Got some parsley in the ground. That's from Jordan at Middleway Farm yeah, that's here in Grinnell. Italian parsley. Yep. yep. Um, and then that is chamomile, also from Middleway Farm, that we transplanted here. And then this one is uh, what do we got there, Dad? That is lavender. Yeah, some lavender coming through. Rosemary. Correct. And then. Another your cactus. Yeah, this is one of my favorite plants in the garden. This is called uh, spider wort or spider web, uh, and it, you can see it's got that web-like substance on it. Just beautiful. Uh, it's actually a variety of sedum. And yeah, this is a, my mom's domain here. We're gonna keep sprucing it up a little bit, but that's the <laughs> flowers. And then down on our vegetable garden, see we've got this new bed uh, which we've been we've been trying out a new bed forming system and you can see these beds are a little mounded up compared to the ones behind it and that's because we've added a lot of organic matter to them compost leaves uh, and everything else you can think of and really made it a nice home for our plants and these are all pepper transplants we've got in here sweet bell peppers 16 Those so roughly one per square foot Yep. using the square foot gardening method yep and then here we've got some eggplant around in the center and then around the edges we've got eggplant and then hot peppers see those grow transplanted our zucchinis out here in this four by four and then right in the center is a head of romaine lettuce that we're actually regrowing from kitchen scraps interestingly it's an experiment obviously there's our <laughs> cucumber trellis from the video today here's yeah. our kale which you saw a few weeks ago we transplanted it and it's really starting to pick up now which is it's getting a good color nice to see these are Kennebec white potatoes just coming through just peeking through there coming to see the old daylight they look good those are planted one per square foot also so yep um, yep uh, here's some broccoli and Brussels sprouts, kind of a mixed brassica bed there. They're starting to really come along. That head's forming up in there. And soon we're going to have some good broccoli. Swiss chard. This is one of my favorite beds on our place, and it's starting to come along. This is rainbow chard. It's called, uh, oh man, I think it's called bright, bright lights. Bright lights, yeah. Bright lights chard. Notice that. Four per square foot is recommended planting on chard. Yeah, and those will keep giving us leafy greens all summer long. Here's our spinach now. Nine per square foot. Yep, nine per square foot, my dad said. And there, you, we've got baby spinach there, so we're probably gonna have some of that to eat tonight. Um, strawberries starting to bloom. You can see little berries coming along in there. Pretty cool. Those are in there one per square foot and uh those are more of a perennial so we'll we'll see how that goes we may be taking runners eventually and moving those to other beds yep here we've got our onions coming along they're starting to starting to pick up a little bit and then these leeks are like little babies you can see we need to weed this bed too but yep leeks. Grown, from, grown from seed onions and leeks both coming from seed now here's freshly planted radishes and right next to it We've got some radishes that are ready to harvest, so I will harvest one for y'all. You can see that's pretty nice. Cauliflower over there, purple purple variety of cauliflower. Arugula in that back corner. And then we've got another row of potatoes here. These got bit off by the frost last week, but they are recovering amazingly well. Yeah, they, you can they, see. They look, you know, like they had been burnt uh, by, the, by the cold they essentially had and um, 
they're recovering very nicely. Yep. And then this broccoli is really far along. This is the first broccoli I started inside and gotten the ground out here. And we've probably only got about another four weeks until we're eating broccoli. Let's from that. <laughs> yeah, if all goes well. Uh, this row is currently covered with this. rabbit attack. Yeah, so next week we're going to cover uh, rabbits, rabbit return in our video. And we're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've got that covered for right now. This is actually rabbit bait right here, these baby peas. Yep. Right so, here, but they're, they're doing really well right now. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we planted this row of peas after the one over there. We can uncover it for a second. Maybe. Pull that out really yeah, quick. sure. But anyway, yeah, we're testing out some different uh, rabbit deterrent methods on this row. And you can see... There's a chopped off one if you want to see. <laughs> yeah, that's some rabbit damage right yeah. there. But... Uh, It'd probably come back. You know, everyone's got to eat. And, you know, I respect Peter Rabbit. And his, he's got to feed his family, right? You know? <laughs> and here's a row of brassicas. They're packed in there really tight. We're kind of using it as a nursery right now. We'll probably have to end up moving some of those out of there. Now, these are all carrots. And you can see that beautiful, fresh top of the carrot. We've got these nicely thinned and all the way down there a little bit. We're gonna plant a lot more carrots this week. I should say, uh, I'll brag on Tommy here a little bit. I should say that Tommy takes uh, his time when he plants carrot seeds and other small seeds uh, and really spaces them very well. And that saves you a lot as you go on, you know, in terms of thinning and coming back and having to go over everything. So well, I really appreciate that. Well, you know, my methodology is if you start just you know some a lot of people they they don't really take much time seeding and they use these machines and stuff and, and one of my favorite parts of farming honestly is uh is is doing the seeding because you're you're actually starting to plant right there and yeah. as soon as you get too big to take the time to seed then it, you lose a lot of the joy so i i like to take take well my said. time with that well said um anyway here's some strawberries again over here my mom's coming out to say hello say hi mom hi. <laughs> hey mom <laughs> broccoli and brassicas in there here's beets beets same family as the chard so you can recognize the leaf a little bit from over the other place horseradish, horseradish. Uh, here's some arugula coming along nice this, this arugula here is kind of interesting uh, we actually took some of the plants from that th that bed there, Tommy, if you'll show them yeah. right there. That they're, they're very tight in there. And we've been trying, you know, we ex gardening is experimenting. So we, we experimenting here with uh, some much uh, broader spacing on the arugula. And so you can kind of see a whole difference in the nature of the plant. Yep. So these are more large and um, uh, sort of uh, convoluted leaves. Uh, very tasty this is more a small tender yeah they're kind of tight they're like competing you get there. like baby greens over yeah, there exactly well said baby greens yep kind of medium greens and here's more arugula these are just sprouts so this yeah and this was planted in the square foot method so yet sort of another plan um here with the square foot you can see here we've got some dill coming up just starting to peek through and dill, yeah dill when it, when it first comes up, it, it can almost look like just little blades of grass. So, uh, but yeah. you'll you'll see quickly, you'll recognize it's something different. Yeah, we'll keep you posted on that in the yeah. weeks to come. Here's our bean sprout, which has just been coming up the past few days, and every single day there's more coming. So, uh, yeah, this is really going to fill out uh, bush beans here. Now, these are planted here at nine per square foot, which is on the high end. Uh, some recommend you look on the internet and so forth some folks recommend four per square foot uh, probably seen it as low as one per square foot but uh, so this is very tight very tight spacing uh, so kind of experimental for us and we'll see what happens uh, we may be focusing a little more on making sure this bed is is well fed with organic products yep uh, and then here we got our tomatoes. tomatoes these are our first four tomatoes we put in the ground there they we just kind of threw them out there as volunteers we're going to plant another tomato bed further out in the sun 
uh, a little later this week. Those were our pioneers going out a little early here in Iowa. So. Yep, pioneer tomato plants. Here's our red iceberg lettuce starting to head up a little bit. And over there, more kale. We think it's mainly kale. We there's, think it's kale. <laughs> we aren't, it could be Brussels sprouts. We we're we're working sure. on our, our labeling method, but uh, we have since decided that we, when we plant brassicas, we have a mix now, a brassica mix, and it'll let us know, but we'll work better on our, our labels. So. Yeah, so there's our garden view as a whole. And then here's our berries that we planted. You can see aronia berry, blueberry there. The blueberries are starting to really look good. We think we're gonna be eating in a few weeks. And yep, our compost pile has been cooking good. It's been, let's see if we can show some steam real quick. Do you yeah. wanna take this with that? Just, yeah, just put some, cut some grass. So, but uh, underneath there is some leaf compost. And uh, you can see how how warm it's gotten. Can you see the steam on uh, there? We'll try to... Oh, it's like 160, 180 in here. I'm actually feeling it from back here with the camera, and Tommy, I'm sure, is yeah. feeling it big time. It's almost like an oven. And, I don't uh, know if that's showing up on the video, but there's steam. Oh, there. almost Ooh. burns my don't hand. Burn yourself. <laughs> but but. It's, it's good to have good, warm, hot compost, and you can see the result of the composting is really rapid composting. Um, we have a number of projects going on with compost. Uh, this is sort of an overflow area of what you just saw. This is some of the sod we took off, actually most of it, and we've mounded it. Uh, you can see the remains of our cold frame down here. Now we've mounded the sod. Uh, and we, were, we will probably be covering that with uh, some other material to try to get that to uh, uh, something like wood chips, uh, to try to get that to even cook down uh, uh, quickly. For now, it's just the Great Pyramid of Iowa, though. Yeah, there with you all go. That sod. Uh, <laughs> the sod pyramid. And then just this week, we had a friend of ours named John Clayton. He delivered us some service berry bushes from the Iowa DNR, so we planted four of those along here. And service berries are both delicious food for humans and for birds. And in a couple of years, we're really going to be enjoying them, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, absolutely. Yep. So, that's our garden walkthrough for this week. And we thank you all for tuning in. Yep. And we'll be back for more next week. We'll see it and watch it grow. <laughs>